Skype was well known 10 years ago with its distinctive ringtone, not so much any longer. Skype was previously a dominant communication software that revolutionized how people interacted online. Skype is widely regarded as a pioneer of internet communication, revolutionizing voice over internet protocol technology. But what exactly occurred? Let's find out the truth regarding Skype's rise and fall. It all started in the tiny country of Estonia, only 12 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union. A group of childhood friends teamed up with two Scandinavian entrepreneurs to transform the way we communicate across boards with an app called Skype. So this was introduced in the early 2000s as a way for people to primarily connect via audio calls over the internet. It was essentially an alternative to using your phone. Back then, Skype was really bringing out to the masses. Then, how did this app that had millions of monthly users suddenly just become a nostalgic sound? Let us find out. Skype was launched in 2003 by Niklas Zinstrom from Sweden and Janis Fries from Denmark. The communication platform previously known as Skyper discovered that the name was already used on multiple internet domains and ultimately decided to change it to Skype. Kazakode was included in early versions of Skype by Zinstrom and Fries. This allowed them to further improve their peer-to-peer -peer architecture, which aided in providing a more dependable and high-quality audio and video communication experience. Compared to the early competition, Skype quickly gained popularity due to its revolutionary features and superior user experience. Their innovation in VOIP technology revolutionized internet communication and created new opportunities for worldwide collaboration. Skype allowed people to interact without relying on a central server. This enabled individuals all over the world to communicate in high-quality voice and video. That was the game-changer Skype needed to build a reputation for itself in the early 2000s. Unlike many of their competitors, Zinstrom and Freeze kept things simple. Instead of bloating Skype with features, they concentrated on one thing, conversation. This added to its allure as a simple video conferencing platform. If you wanted to make internet calls, you'd use Skype. Have you used Skype? Skype quickly grew popular due to its ability to link individuals all over the world. Everyone enjoyed using the site, whether it was to catch up with friends or hold a conference with coworkers. It was also the ideal answer for companies searching for a low-cost means to connect with their employees and consumers. Skype had taken the world by storm by the mid-2000s, and millions of users couldn't get enough of it. Skype, in fact, was the future, or so everyone assumed. So what exactly happened? Skype grew in popularity and was eventually purchased by eBay for $2.5 billion in 2005. While eBay brought a lot of cash to the table, it quickly became clear that the firm struggled to monetize Skype and did not completely integrate it into its offerings. eBay was also not entirely devoted to Skype's growth and expansion. Its concentration remained on e-commerce, and as a result, it did not provide Skype with the resources it required to grow. Skype's capacity to innovate and compete with other communication platforms was hampered as a result. To make matters worse, eBay claimed that they had overvalued Skype, resulting in even more friction between the founders and eBay's senior executives. This resulted in Freeze and Zenstrom quitting the company in early 2008, followed by eBay's decision to discontinue Skype. The in-year 2010s occurred. Social media became absolutely mainstream. Sure, Facebook and MySpace showed people what social networking could do, but things were about to get out of hand. Between 2010 and 2020, we saw the introduction of Snapchat, Instagram, Twitch, FaceTime, and numerous other apps. These apps quickly gained millions of followers and sparked a social media revolution. What's the clincher? These apps frequently included, or later added, video conferencing capabilities as well as social networking elements. In comparison, Skype's single-use service began to appear quaint. Now, no offense to Microsoft. If we spent $8.5 billion on something, we'd do everything we could to make it work. And try it did. With a slew of crowd-pleasing features lifted from its younger siblings. We're talking emoticons, themes, and a stories feature a la Instagram. Silver Lake Partners headed a group of investors who purchased the damaged Skype. The transaction aided the ailing platform's recovery and concentration on its core phone and video communication offerings. Microsoft came in with $8.5 billion in hand in 2011. Microsoft enhanced its workplace communication capabilities by acquiring Skype, which led to the development of Skype for business. This may have been the sole positive outcome of the transaction. One of the issues with the acquisition was that Microsoft moved away from what made Skype unique, VOIP. Instead, in an attempt to outperform the competition, they incorporated capabilities that were inconsistent with Skype's role as a communication and collaboration tool. Microsoft compromised Skype's key capabilities and brand by bloating the product. This resulted in customers experiencing performance concerns and an increasingly complex user interface. In response to user demand, Skype implemented improvements, but bad feelings take time to heal. And just as Skype was getting started, a global pandemic struck. 
Suddenly, large swaths of office workers required a dependable video conferencing tool to communicate with their coworkers. As a result, Skype's shift to social networking would be its undoing. The app had a reputation for including unnecessary features, and unnecessary features were the last thing people needed when trying to get things done during a pandemic. Instead, these people flocked to Zoom, a fresh upstart. After all, Zoom was clean, simple, and simple to use, much like old Skype. The statistics speak at all. Zoom grew its global market share by 22.3% between 2020 and 2021. At the same moment, Skype's stock dropped by a bone-chilling 25.8%. However, Zoom was not the only challenger in the race for video conferencing domination. Microsoft, the company that owns Skype, released a communications package named Teams in 2017. To make matters worse, Teams' market share surpassed Skype's in 2021. This, of course, begs the question, why would Microsoft build a product in direct rivalry with itself? Here's the thing. When Microsoft announced Teams, it was presumably not thinking of it as a competition to Skype. We believe Microsoft intended for Skype to expand into a full-fledged social network, while Teams might create a niche in the business market. The pandemic halted those plans. With everyone cooped up at home, the distinction between social app and business app became far less significant. And, to be honest, Teams was a superior video conferencing option. It was, and still is, a jack-of-all-trades, a formidable workplace communication and collaboration tool that can also be used to communicate with friends. At the time of writing, the percentage of employees who prefer to work from home was increasing, and as the desire to connect the office and the home grows, Teams shows no signs of slowing down. Skype's major competition was more user-friendly and dependable. Zoom concentrated on developing only features that aided video conferencing and collaboration, such as virtual backdrops, screen sharing, and recording capabilities. Zoom was able to accurately fulfill the market requirement and establish itself as a superior alternative to Skype by prioritizing these areas of improvement. This is where things started to go wrong, because many people believed that by focusing on showy features, Microsoft was ignoring Skype's main strength, seamless, low-latency video and audio calling. Users pounded the software with critical feedback, reducing its rating on Apple's UK App Store to one star. One review summed up the bad vibes as follows. I feel like with all of these new updates, Skype is taking up valuable space on our phones that they could be using to improve the app's features, making new features, icons, lists, and advice that no one will use. What is the current state of Skype in 2023? In 2021, Microsoft retired Skype for business. Instead of catering to commercial consumers, the company decided to concentrate on the personal version of the service. The goal was to inspire individuals to stay in touch with their loved ones regardless of where they were in the world. But the tale of modern productivity and communication is more than just video calls. It's also about improved collaboration features and seamless integration. Skype helped connect individuals and increase productivity. Even if it made a few mistakes, it paved the way for other amazing tools that followed. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications.